So if it's okay, all I'm going to ask really just to start a little conversation is for you to introduce yourselves and the name of your film and a little bit about it and really what you'd like audiences to know and um, any sort of challenges that, that you've overcome making them. Um, so Cameron, we'll start with you. Is that okay? Uh, sure. Um, hello, my name is Cameron Carr. I am an animation student from UCA Farnham. I'll be going into my uh, third year uh, by mid-October this year. Um, uh, the film Strange is uh, an autobiographical film about yours truly. Um, it's about my personal moments and experiences told in a, in a be from a beginning, middle and end kind of story. And uh, it's about me being an autistic person and me going through life uh, using coping mechanisms like, uh, like uh, headphones because I have, uh, I'm quite sensitive to sound. So, you know, I play music or sometimes I just put them on to uh, diffuse the sound a bit when it's really noisy in the streets, you know. Uh, um, it's, it's more of a wholesome comedy though. It isn't a serious film at all. Uh, I try to keep it lighthearted and uh, fun. So, you know, so it's not like a serious thing, despite it being about autism, despite it being very personal, I try to make it like wholesome, lighthearted kind of thing. Well, thank you. And I'm sure it was a labor of love as well. You know, did you find the, the process more challenging because the subject is about you and your life compared to something that was, would be more abstract, for example? Right, right. Um, I mean, I think, uh, how do I put this? I, I, I think for, for like, a, for when the idea grew a little bit and then, and then I started adding more personal things like, uh, like um, me using a credit card instead of cash because of um, like, because of like the texture and stuff like that. And, and me talking about when I was like a little baby and I didn't like people which I think everyone can relate to, strangely enough. And uh, with the credit card thing, actually, it's more relevant today because of COVID. So yeah. I guess the strange isn't the new normal, maybe. But so I think the point I'm trying to make here is that I think, I think for the for the first ten seconds, I was like, "What? No, this is embarrassing," I, I should, or whatever. This is too weird, too strange. May I add? But actually, no. It, it's if anything, strangely enough, I'm, I'm excused the puns, I'm not trying to do it too much, but I, I think strangely enough, a lot of people can relate to it. A lot of people can empathize or sympathize with it, you know? Uh, and actually a lot of my, a lot of my friends are in the film as well. Uh, they, they made an impact when I came to Farnham. Uh, I grew a lot of independence, like simple things like going to the shops and stuff. Usually I, I go with my parents, but, uh, I think COVID did rob that for me a bit of the independence. Now we have to be staying indoors. But uh, but a few years ago, I, I would go out and do these simple tasks that most people would take for granted. And I, and I try to make it fun, you know, in the, in the animation because uh, I try to share my sense of humor in the film. Uh, yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you, Cameron. Um, that is a brilliant insight. And very honest and very personal, of course, and well done. And it is um, testament to your skill and um, your knowledge, as opposed to in terms of filmmaking, that you've been shortlisted in, in this category and well done. And we're very excited about sharing the film with Cinemagic audiences. And I hope it reaches as many people as possible and, and helps them understand what you know, you're getting across in the movie um, based on your experiences and inspired by your own your own life. Um, so thank you for that. Thank you very much. Um, I'll head over to Anne now. Is that okay? Have I pronounced your name correctly? Yes, that's correct. Great. Well, you're very welcome. Thanks for making the time to join us this afternoon. 
I know everybody's very busy, um, even during lockdown and spending time at home. Um, so we really appreciate you making the time. So, um, and we really, as I was just saying at the start, we're really keen on just developing a little community here um, just to touch base with everybody since we won't be able to get to see you in person at Cinemagic and I hope just that this session will, you know, allow that um, as well and that little bit of interaction with the filmmaking community. So um, if you can just introduce your film and tell us what inspired you to make it and how it came about, really. Okay. So, hi, I'm Anais. I am the director and animator of Delphine No Dogs. So this is a short film that was created at university in our final year, just a few months before lockdown. And it was part of a live project telling stories of people of immigrants migrants to the UK of Irish and Afro-Caribbean descent and their experience with racism and trying to fit into the community and we had the option of choosing some lovely beautiful voice recordings of, from interviews of people sitting down and talking about that experience and we had Delphine who came to the UK with her child and she was working all the time when her child unexpectedly falls ill. This was animated on the multiplane and it was created in really short space of time. We used paper cutout techniques and mixed this with Lottie Reininger and Lauren Child's textures um, to try and create a unique look to tell a past story and make it a bit more modern and connectable to the audience. Um, and it was really trying to get across just for the first, a personal connection um, of Delphine with her child to the audience and seeing that it's such a, it's such a thing that can happen to anyone, but also raise awareness to the fact that it does take, it did for her, take someone else helping her out because she wasn't able to help herself out or get the support she needed. It was, she wasn't taken seriously when she said her child was ill. And I think the film really helps to show what, simple helping your neighbor out or just community bringing brings them together it really shows that one kind person can really help change your life at that time well thank you and that is very much um a universal thing that you would like to get across to people at the end of the day everybody is actually there to help one another and should be there to help one another and to get that across in your film um is such a strong message to convey as well in terms of that community help and, and support. Um, so had you any major challenges with creating the film that you had to overcome? Um, there were quite a few challenges because originally it was four weeks and this was being pitched to a real client. There was a real deadline and it was trying to convey something emotional whilst like putting a lot of effort to make a nice product, make a nice film, but also trying to work under time constraints. And I think one of the challenges was just the fact that we used quite a few mediums and techniques. So I was animating and directing it, but I've had a team who were designing the assets and I would be working on one scene and someone will try and bring me the next batch of designs or characters so I could switch between the two. And it was simple as having to readjust the camera and try not to get reflections in the film. Or at one point, we had to, I had to have someone step in to use their hands for a pixelation scene and they would write out, but you could not read their writing. So I would stand on a chair, take each shot and I would switch out their hands so I would write the next letter. And the worst part of that was they wanted the name to be changed. They didn't want the full name. So afterwards, we had to edit it digitally and change the name into the animation after I spent like a whole day standing over and trying to paint that in and just do the whole shot in one go. Um, so there's sometimes you make the changes, but you find that, oh, you have to do something else. And you, you, you might lose that time that you put into it, but it's also learning, oh, next time either you know you learn from the experience of the mistakes you make for it absolutely and, and that's actually great advice as well or you know a great insight because everyone needs to understand that as well and it always happens and you know especially with animation which is such a time consuming process to begin with you're probably already defaulted to think this is going to take longer than the, the vision for it um but yeah well you seem to have overcome that all really really well and i think um 
the film is going to be a brilliant film to have in our showcase and audiences at Cinemagic will certainly enjoy it and um, we really hope that we can do all we can to, to promote it as well in the next um, couple of weeks as part of the showcase. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, over to uh, Sorka then. Hi Sorka, how are you? We're, I'm just putting how you on the spot now. <laughs> um, it's great to see you. Great to have you here. It's and great to be here. Um, yeah. well done on being shortlisted in the Cinemagic competition. Thank you very much. Um, what then can you tell us about your film um and really what inspired it um i know it certainly um will resonate with lots of audiences especially <laughs> young children who haven't got to the cinema in an awful long time i hope um, so <laughs> so yeah tell us yeah. All a little bit about um, it i think like first of all it's, it's an absolute honor to to be selected um and i think it's wonderful that there's so many fil female filmmakers as well that's been selected that's great um <laughs> love to see it and um, so RAR, RAR is a film god RAR, RAR has a, a, a quite an interesting sort of development story so I, I'm a, I am an animator um, and designer for a studio and, and have been for a couple of years and I'm not a writer <laughs> I'm not, I haven't directed anything before and um, so during lockdown I was feeling the way I think everyone was feeling just really isolated and worried and I started organically just writing which I've never done before and I wrote about this little girl that wanted to go to the cinema which I think all filmmakers can, can relate to um, and she doesn't get to and I think the reason I wrote about a child is because I felt like a child and I think we all did we all have this collective trauma of losing control and um, losing our autonomy and not being and, and for obviously a good a good reason um I I I don't like argue that at all it's it, it was just quite a dramatic change to our routines and it impacted all of our mental health I think um in ways that we'll probably uncover to years to come for and I, I honestly I just wanted to write a story that reflected that frustration um that little little girls, little boys could look at and see themselves reflected on the screen, um, but also for adults. Um, so there's two main characters in my film. There's a little girl that doesn't get to see her most favoritist dinosaur film uh, be released to the cinema because of lockdown restrictions. Um, and there's her mum. And the mum character, she's, you think it's about Kalina, but I, I honestly think it's the mum. I think it applauds her. I think it applauds parents. And I really wanted to show that um, th these parents, these moms, these dads had to wear so many hats and that there's so much expected of them. So I, I really wanted to applaud them. They, they were employees, they were working from home, they were parents. They had to teach a lot of the time because teaching went, especially for younger kids, um, teaching skills went remote and they, they had to juggle so many things. <laughs> so, um, and as well, kids um, are kids and that, um, if, if they have limited understanding or frustration and sometimes they're selfish and like aren't we all and they just want things to work out and they just want the things that they want so I wanted to show a mom um, navigating that and trying to work her way through the complexities of lockdown in this new world where she's ex so much is expected of her um, and I also feel really strongly about um, complicated female characters so Kalina the little girl in my short film she's the she's the the protagonist, I suppose, um, as well as the mum. And she's not, a, a, I wouldn't say she's like a typical little girl. Um, I always related to um, girls that were very boisterous and liked sort of more traditional sort of duty stuff, I suppose. Um, and I love like Lilo from Lilo and Stitch and um, so many characters. And I felt like um, this is an opportunity to show and my mom as well as a childminder so I, I know these little girls I know what they're like um so I I wanted to reflect that I wanted to show like you don't have to be this sort of cut out of a of a cartoon character you can be complicated um you can like many many things like boy things and girl things um or traditional boy things and girl things um so yeah that 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 was kind of what where I was coming at with the script and then I packed it up <laughs> didn't <laughs> didn't think much of it went okay that was a fun little experiment um back to animating and then the bbc and i put out um bbc northern ireland that is sorry 
um, is put out this scheme called the Two Minute Masterpiece. And the theme was connection. And I thought, wow, that's so that's crazy. I wrote a script, like not for this, not for this scheme, but I did re write a script that's a two pager and it fits the brief. I would love to get some funding. I'd love to make this, wouldn't that be wonderful? Um, so I pitched it and I got it, which is just wonderful news for a first time director. That's, that's unbelievable. And uh, we had a six weeks, six week production period of making a two minute animated film. So I tried to keep the production side really, really simple. Um, I just kept a, Adobe After Effects and Photoshop, just uh, mainly because if I needed help, I know that most people have those offers. So if you use Excel Action or Tim Boom, um, they probably won't be read readily available for most people. Um, and I knew that my friends from university and meeting people in the industry and things like they would have those softwares so if I needed a day or if I wanted to lean on people a little bit that would be much easier with more um with with software that's cheap as well compared to these these big boys of softwares and um, so that was sort of the the reasoning behind that and also After Effects and Photoshop are just insanely like, incredibly powerful pieces of software um, and they could do so much so that that was that was the production re reasons there um, and the other thing is painting and Photoshop, I feel like gives you the most freedom, um, all the brushes that you can use. And if you work in a, a software like Flash, for example, um, I know it's, it's updated now, but back in the day, <laughs> um, it, it was quite vector based, um, which was hard to get like some sort of broken edges or texture involved in the animation. So um, I wanted it to feel like a painting. Um, so I was very influenced by UK and Irish um, for, from the look dev side, yeah. um, UK and Irish uh, illustrators and book writers like Benji Davies, um, Oliver Jeffers, who's actually from Belfast as well as me, and um, uh, Judith Kerr. Th th these people that, uh, these illustrators that aren't very clean, that you can see the chalk marks, you can see their fingerprints, you can see um, the mess that they've made on the page. And it's, it's lovely. It's like a human hand has touched it. It's not like, oh, a computer has made this. Um, it's actually like really raw and emotional and um, that's what I wanted to get across in, in sort of the look of it and I think that really fit fit in with the um, theme and the tone of what I was trying to get across as well um, and then musically I'm like beside myself that one of my best friends is a composer and a very talented composer um, so I brought him on really early on like I think the day after I pitched to BBC and I, I think I rang him and was like, you're doing this. <laughs> I don't care what happens or if I get the funding or not. I think my heart's set and I'm going to make this thing. So we're going to do this together. So we, we kind of approached it the way like Disney would do their sort of princess musical films in that he had like quite a lot, like me and him both were on equal footing with the story. Um, and we both have like a quite, we're both very opinionated. So we've, have a lot of thoughts and the animatic I think went through I, I think by the end it was like on version 111 or something and um, a lot of late nights and a lot of things being scrapped because we just wanted it to be as pure and simple as possible but that's not always the the easiest thing to do so there was a lot of scenes that um just got scrapped because it was all just detail and no um it, it, it wasn't like structured it wasn't like it wasn't purely telling the story that it needed to be told so it was hard work <laughs> um but I'm so glad that we did it as well um and That's, throughout this I'm oh, sorry I was just gonna say it's such um well it is such a time stamp for for now <laughs> as well so you know even yeah, of course. years time or you know further afield um or further along the way like it'll be interesting looking back at it as well because it'll probably be only then that you sort of really realize the whole extent of everything and yeah, I just think absolutely. it's so great because it was very much off its time as well so <laughs> you know um and for to get the funding to do it as well after you know after the idea I suppose and then you know actually getting it physically brought to yeah, life it was just nice to pay people do you know it was nice to be like obviously I, I mentioned before about leaning on people but I, I also you know give them money which is just amazing um because everyone that worked on the on the film um brought a little bit of themselves to the project first of all worked really tirelessly on it 
and were very talented. Like I was so humbled to be surrounded by like that. I personally, I think are the best people in the industry, like from, from my experience work, working in Northern Ireland and also being able to give them money. <laughs> like you'd feel, I, I felt a little bit, um, I, I felt so much better about that, especially morally, um, especially in an industry where you're expected sometimes to do free work. Um, so I, 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 it felt good to be like, I, I, I appreciate you with my words, but I also appreciate you because <laughs> I'm giving you actual money. <laughs> um, That's probably something that you all as filmmakers um, strive for because, you know, they're, you know, yes, everybody a lot of the time and majority of the time have to start out working perhaps free of charge, getting your portfolio built up, you know, leaning on friends and colleagues and family members to help you. And then, you know, it's having that drive and passion to actually get stuff made and get stuff done. That then it's that whole thing of, you know, all of the hard, you know, the luck comes with all of the hard work that comes before it. So, um, and, and funding, I suppose, is probably something that you all, you know, you know, want to find out more about and be able to apply for things. And, um, you know, then one thing leads to another with networking and, you know, seeing what opportunities arise, especially with animation, because there's always so many collaborative <laughs> partners involved and, you know, um, funders from across Europe working on, on things, you know, together. So um, that's something hopefully like even going forward that we can have more discussions about through Cinemagic, you know, as in I have an idea, what is next? You know, how can I get it? How can I get it off the ground? How can I work with other people? How can I possibly apply for funding? Because we're all, um, you know, wanting to get ideas brought to life. And, you know, that that is the reality of it as well. And that next stage of actually being able to get a salary from what you do, or as you say, <laughs> pay other people <laughs> and acknowledge their talents and, and putting a value on it. Um, which yeah. is so 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 important um, well everyone will look forward to seeing the film at Cinemagic um, <laughs> and we'll be doing all we can to promote it as well and um, over the next couple of weeks and yes of course we're especially proud to have a Northern Ireland shortlisted filmmaker as well <laughs> um, in, in the competition um, nice. so yeah no thank you so much for that for that insight Sorka and it'll be great now that you know each of you two know a little bit about each other when you do um tune in and watch the movies um so thank you um so over thank to you so thank you sorka over to meg then next hello meg thanks for joining us hi there hello it's great to have you with us thanks for making the time to get to get involved today no problem thank you claire so meg congratulations on being shortlisted as well and We'd like you just to, you know, to give you an opportunity to talk about how your film came about and tell us a little bit about it, really. Yeah, of course. Uh, so my name is Meg. Uh, nice to see all of you. So my film is called Borderline and I wrote, uh, directed, animated it myself. And I finished it last year. Uh, it was a university project and it's about... Uh, the stories of the women from Northern Ireland who have had to travel over to England for an abortion. So it's quite a quite a big one. And um, so, as I said, I did this at university. I went to UCI Farnham, and they kind of they really encourage you to. Hi, Cameron. I see you. <laughs> they yeah, really encourage. I'm alumni there. Oh, you've got to stick together. <laughs> and. Uh, as Cameron would know, yeah, they, they really make you go for the big ones. Um, so, and forgive me if I forget a few things because it was last year. Uh, I feel like with lockdown and everything, my brain has just turned to fudge and I don't even know what's happening anymore. You know, um, what actually even happened yesterday? <laughs> oh, I know. Like, I can't remember what I had for breakfast at this point. It's crazy, but I'll do my best. Um, I have notes that I took at the time down here with me just in case. Um, but it all kind of centred if we cast our eyes back to about 2018, whenever down south in, uh, they, they had the repeal the eighth. And at that time I was, I was at university and I was, I'd seen it on the news and I just thought it was incredible. And that like people were physically traveling back to Ireland from America and England to vote in this referendum. 
And whenever all of that happened, and it thankfully got passed, it seemed like the world's eye was on Northern Ireland for a moment. And I had everyone around me saying, oh, Meg, aren't you so happy for this? They know I'm, I'm massively into this sort of stuff. And everyone was saying, I'm sure Northern Ireland will be next and it will happen. And I found that it fizzled out quite quickly. People really weren't paying attention to it anymore. And I really just wanted to do something about it. Like, and the best thought I could do was, well, you're a filmmaker. You got to go make a film about it if you care, right? So I did that. And throughout the process of it, I also found that, um, again, being in England, they either kind of got confused and they thought, oh, well, you're, surely your laws are the same as ours in England, which they aren't. And it was the same with um, people in the south of Ireland I knew. Some of them would even say, surely our laws have affected yours in the north. And I said, well, unfortunately not, they haven't. And so it made me realise that Northern Ireland is in a very unique position where it doesn't share any of these it's really its own entity and we have to we really have to speak about that and the film is um it's 2d it's traditional animation and it was all either you know drawn frame by frame and either shot on a rostrum or scanned in painstakingly it took so long (laughs) um but the effect of it was to really try and it's all very white and very stark. And um, there, ironically, there's not actually very much animation in it. It's very, very tiny movements, uh, which I, I did worry about at the time, considering it was an animation degree and I was like, things are barely moving. But subconsciously, I think I realized that, well, you wouldn't want these big grand movements. You want these tiny little interactions. You know, you've got to put yourself in the shoes of the, the women that have gone through this and have had to make this journey and it was to get this bold and starkness across and I think it worked quite well I think it was quite quite effective (laughs) um but through everything um what was I saying Well, you'll have to prompt me I've lost my train of thought (laughs) everything just sort of well well, the end goal was the story you wanted to tell, the message you want to get across, and mm. particularly, obviously, using film as this platform to get that message across. And Oh, yes. Um, Especially animation in itself, I think everyone will agree. And with such a sensitive subject matter as abortion, like it is so individual and every single person has an opinion on it. Yeah. And animation in particular lends a certain quality to it because it's not really real which is quite interesting because everything is you know handmade you're kind of curating it yourself whereas if you're if you were to make a film about this making that so real I think it would be quite jarring potentially but because it's an animation it's real enough that you are invested in it and you can understand and you you want like you understand what's happening but there's this kind of sensitivity to it and that animation can lend to it, which I don't think another kind of medium could. It's quite special and I'm sure it would work for other quite serious subject matters uh, in the same field. That is a very good point as well um, in terms of the genre of animation in the subtle day, I suppose, too, of the way animation is made. And as you mentioned there about not there, but there not being big dramatic you know, animated scenes or movements or activity, but that is very symbolic then of the sensitive nature of the story that you're trying to tell. And I think that's a really, actually a nice insight and a nice way to think about it. Um, Mm. Sensitively, you know, strategically and sensitively thought out. um, Yes. (laughs) You know, Um, well, thank you, Meg. That is great. It really is incredible just to get that insight and, you know. I want to Claire, can I ask Meg a question? Yes, yeah. uh, d- you didn't did you get any black backlash uh, on the yeah. film? I've yet to find out because um this is <laughs> the first, uh it's done really well in like English festival circuits and I think I've had one in Spain or something, but um no one in Northern Ireland has really seen it yet. So I'm quite I am a bit scared about it, if I'm honest. Um there's a few people 
I worked in a coffee shop um, just before lockdown and you know people ask you what you do and I'd say oh I'm an animator what have you done oh I've just made a film about abortion and uh, it, people were quite religious there they were quite conservative and so I think that was the first time I actually realized oh my god you're not in you're not in England anymore honey you've got to yeah, you're absolutely. in Northern Ireland now and these things are very much real and you still have to fight for them. So you know what? I haven't quite found out yet. <laughs> I hope it's not too bad. <laughs> Me too. I'm sure you all have my back. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Exactly. You know, we're all a uh, sisterhood and brotherhood in, in this category, anyway. <laughs> um, Good to hear. Thank you. Thank you, Meg. Um, and last but not least, Paulina, thank you so much for joining us, Paulina. Hi. You're very welcome. Thank you. Um, yeah, so my name is Paulina. I've graduated from the University of Surrey this July with a degree of media studies and digital media arts. And my film is called The Diary of Self. It was my final project for the degree. And it's an animated documentary that addresses the struggle of self-acceptance in the world of um, beauty standards. Yeah, and it's a 2D film drawn frame by frame. Um, and in order to create it, I had to ask my friends to record me some video, um, no, sorry, voice messages uh, about their self-perception. And so the story is told in, for, in form of six monologues that are interve intervened with each other. And yeah, in there, they share their insecurities in regards to their appearance and their thoughts on how to eventually come to accepting and loving yourself. And the main struggle was that I'm not an animator. My degree is not animation and I'm also not an art student. And I only had done one film before this one. Um, so yeah, it was a bit of a struggle in order of my skills. Uh, yeah, and like, I had something that I had, like I had something in my head and I really wanted to create something out of it, but then it was really hard for me to find out how to exactly. And another struggle was that I had 14 participants who recorded me audio messages and shared their stories. Uh, but in the end, I had to focus on only six of them uh, to make the story coherent and also short enough to be able to make a film by myself because I like, yeah, I directed and animated it all by myself. Um, but it was definitely a shame to leave out so many more thoughts and stories that I received out, yeah. Excellent. Well, that is incredible as well in terms of being a one-woman band um, because animation is very much, I know, depending on, you know, the situation and the teams and obviously the budgets, but, like, I know it is a very solitary craft and you are you know wearing a lot of hats <laughs> in terms of the whole a to z of the filmmaking process um so that is incredible as well and just to have that um foresight and sort of drive to you know play those multiple roles as such um so that is great and congratulations then on graduating in july as well i'm sure <laughs> you might have thought that wasn't going to come <laughs> um with everything that's been been going on um well paulina that is fantastic um a diary of self um really deserves to be in the shortlisted showcase at cinemagic and we're really um we are really proud to present it as well um for the the audiences at cinemagic to see and enjoy um, and forgive me, I did say last but not least to Polina there, but um, Freya, um, we were chatting at the very start of the Zoom before everybody else connected in, so it was in my head that we all had already chatted. But um, <laughs> now, last but certainly not least, um, I'll officially welcome you to the, the chat and um, if you can tell us a little bit about your film and how it came to be and, and really the story behind it. Yeah, um, so my name is uh, Freya Reckling Hansen. I'm a writer, director, and also a sp spoken word poet. Um, so my film, or our film, is um, called I Worry. And it started out actually as a spoken word poem, um, which is about two, or one out of two, about the Fridays for Future um, climate strikes. Um, that you might have heard uh, about Greta Thunberg, who um, kind of initiated, initiated all of that. And last year I got to 
um, take part in a few of those strikes here in Edinburgh. Um, and I just found it to be very powerful to see all of these like very like up to very young children being there and these extremely well-spoken teenagers that had clearly sat down and really studied um, the IPCC report and just like research around the world about what climate change is doing to our ecosystems and our planet in general and um, how it's affecting the global south and how we're already seeing kind of the impacts of it um, already. And yeah, I just found that to be incredibly inspiring. And um, yeah, so I wrote the first of the two poems, which is called Sea, which is also has a little music video to it. Um, and then a few months later, I wanted to write something a little bit different that wasn't just me talking about my feelings about everything, but it was kind of trying to portray um, how these kids um, or children feel about um, this situation. And so um, the story is about um, Greta and um, three other children and kind of their perspective from the place that they are in the world. Um, particularly the, the global south and how climate change is affecting their areas and their livelihoods um, and why they worry about um, climate change. And so, yeah, so that's kind of how it began. And I was performing this poem at um, a spoken word night here in Scotland. And I met Holly Summerson, who is the other director of the animation um, and saw her, how she was showing some very incredible um, work of hers that was about um, mental health. And um, I saw her animations and I just thought this would be amazing to put together with like, I think as Meg said, like to kind of make it a little bit more, not necessarily lighthearted, but a little bit less heavy because climate change is such a heavy topic. Um, and I think a lot of people are put off by that. And I guess in some ways my, my poem was also <laughs> extremely heavy. And um, so I thought collaborating with her uh, would be an incredible opportunity. And then I am extremely lucky to know amazing Jack Hinks, who I can't recommend enough if anyone ever needs anything composed. He is extremely talented. Um, he's a, a guitarist and singer songwriter and also yeah composer and um, uh, I'm very um, proud to call him a friend as well and I messaged him and I said um, yeah could we could we make something can we record um, this and so we recorded I worry and also see and um, and I just told him kind of what I thought the mood would be and what kind of instruments. And he just sat down and made the music. And it was a hundred times better than I had ever like dreamed to imagine. He exactly did with it what I wanted. And we had to make so, so few changes to it. It was more about like pitches and stuff like that. And um, same with Holly, like I sent over the track to her and she, we talked a little bit back and forth about what we wanted um, the different parts, like what visualizations should go with the different parts and um, talked about um, her doing the hand-drawn shock um, animation with it and make it a little bit more simple so that, you know, it's not kind of overwhelming both having to listen to the spoken words and the music and also looking and reading the subtitles. And um, so I think, again, like I was just blown away by how incredibly talented Holly is and um, such few things as well that um, I asked her to, I, I didn't ask her to redo anything. I just asked her to maybe to put a few things more in there. And she did that. And actually what took us the longest was to decide on what type of, of subtitles to have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was, uh, yeah, um, quite funny that that was the only thing that was taking long to to do but then finally yeah a couple of months ago we finished it during lockdown 
um, which of course pushed it back a little bit. Um, and yeah, and just I'm just very proud to have like kind of made this come true and also put in some of my own money because I think as we talked about before, also like I wanted to pay them because I think what they do is so incredibly um, great. Uh, so yeah, so I guess the, the challenges with me, me, the budget and me deciding to pay for their work myself. Um, so yeah, that's, that's it, I guess. Thank you. And do you know what? That is evident from what you've said. It's so evident about the individual nature of animation filmmaking. However, it is such a collaborative effort as well. And, you know, that whole community spirit and the network of filmmaking and all of that, I think it's just, um, you know, it's so important as well to know that you're not on your own making films and, you know, there's, you've got talented friends and colleagues and everybody is going to help you along the way and whether that's in your normal nine to five job in film or animation or whatever you're pursuing through study or as a hobby and I think that's just really important you know to get that out there you know to young filmmakers um you know that it's about collaboration and that there's always somebody there as well to help and I think that's just such the the nature of the arts in general and the creative industries um and it's why, especially in this day and age, for your health and well-being, you know, the collaboration and creativity and everything, you know, it's so important to have that outlet. Over to you, Sophia. So, um, and the film we made about Anne Fraser is part of a collection called No Dogs, and it's been produced by Flintlock Theatre, a theatre company based in Oxford, who commissioned these films based on interviews that they got from real people, um, immigrants from uh, the Afro-Caribbean countries and Ireland, uh, people that are first generation immigrants or second generation. And is part of the first generation. She came to London in 1948 and her interview was, we had to choose the interview we wanted to animate. And we, we have been struck by her short interview. Uh, it was three minutes something because it was so spontaneous and natural and but at the same time told about the very dark past of um, this, uh, this whole situation that is still really relevant today. Um, so we had um, 10 days to animate because we had only four weeks for the whole project from presentation to pitch animation and presentation. Therefore, um, it's, it, we had to choose um, a kind of animation that was quite quick to make. So uh, trying to, you know, convey this very powerful message at the same time. And uh, yeah, the outcome was very satisfying and um, uh, really enjoyed by the people of theatre. Uh, this animation are going to be screened together with a play that the theatre is planning to um, produced for, it was supposed to be for this year, but of course it's been postponed for 2021. And um, the animation will be screened, I think, before the play itself. So yeah, that's gonna be its place. But right now we're just making it, you know, go around the world so can people can know about this project. That is excellent. And it's brilliant to be part of sort of a wider project as well and that the film is a very important part, but one component of an overall picture. Um, and as you say, the way that it has turned out, the film is going to be seen and shared ahead of the, the theatre production as well. Um, so that's nice in that regard. So your work is going to be shared and um, perhaps will reach even more audiences then beca because of that. Um, so Anastasia, what was your role on the film and you know, how, how daunting was it having just four weeks then to turn it all around? So uh, actually to be more 
productive in this kind of short time period. Uh, we try to kind of give everyone a certain role. Uh, of course, like uh, in terms of a story and storyline and like kind of uh, um, narrative, like, uh, I mean, the story was already set, like it was at uh, Anne's Fraser, but the visualization process and everything, we tried to work together. Uh, however, my role was to make in the storyboarding animatics. And then I took um, uh, a, a part uh, as well as uh, Paolo and Gemma in creating, uh, creating in um, uh, the backgrounds, the setup. Uh, Sophia did a lot of uh, puppets, like in terms of Anne Fraser uh, as a character for the stop motion. So we tried to kind of um, kind of give everyone a certain role. So my part was mostly creating uh, a backgrounds and then helping Sophia to kind of uh, polish and produce more of the puppets because it turns out we need quite a lot of those. So we tried to work uh, as quick as possible and be productive as possible. So, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. Well, that shows you that you all have worked so well together and have collaborated so well to produce something off of this quality as well. And Gemma, then how, I suppose, did you get involved in the project initially? Like, how did you all come together? And then specifically, what was your role? Um, I mean, I think we all just kind of came together because... I don't know, we were, was all kind of friends in class anyway, and we just wanted to see what it would be like to work together. Um, and I think we all kind of liked the same audio, so it kind of made us like join together through that. Um, and then my main role was sort of helping um, make the backgrounds and set with uh, Paula and Anna. And then I also did the some of the editing and color correction for um, post-production um, to kind of just give it like the final finish and cut it all together, yeah. And is editing something that you're particularly interested in going forward or was it just a case of somebody having to do it <laughs> for this no, project? I, mean, I, I quite like editing. I did want to, um, I do want to try and get into like uh, production, like being a producer and stuff. Um, and I don't know, I feel like editing is quite good in that sort of method because you kind of see the whole film and kind of splice it together and stuff. So I do like both of those kind of Brilliant, okay. Um, and then, Paula, then how did you fit into the overall equation? What particular roles did you enjoy then as part of it? Well, I was mainly doing background sets like set design and now did some character designs for the dog and the cows in some of the scenes, which was very fun. I don't know, I feel like I'm more of an illustration type of person. I really love visuals so that I really love that part I did like the woods and the streets and I was also helping out wherever I can because Sophia just did an amazing job with the animation so whenever I could I was there just to assist and help out and um, yeah I think I love this project so much because um, we've never we're really good friends but we've never worked all the four of us before and it's just we were like a smooth machine I loved how it turned out we were all just helping each other out even though it was such a short period of time I think it was the best experience working on a project while I was at uni overall well that is so great to hear and it's brilliant when a team do just come together and the, the dynamic is so positive and everyone is helping each other out and obviously you all had a very clear and shared vision for it which you know, resulted in it being so successful and everybody working so well together. Um, another thing, obviously, is everyone um, on the team are female. So that is such a brilliant thing as well in terms of promoting filmmaking talent among um, women and women in film. And, um, you know, overall, is that something, Sophia, that you would be very much interested in promoting going forward? And then, of course, the subject of your film is um, about a female and her story. I think, yeah, I think there are stories out there that need to be given a voice. And this is one, one example, but uh, th these days are very like intense days that we're living. And uh, more and more you get out, you become aware that um, there's a lot to say. And uh, we as animators have the tools to say it. So in the last year, during the third year of uni, you kind of, uh, have this epiphany like okay from now on I'm not only like someone who draws all day I'm someone who can say things out there and no dogs is an example therefore um, realizing this power 
makes you puts you in a path like okay this is what i'm doing right now and i want to make it real so uh definitely it's something that um if if it's going to happen in the future where i got my own project to do even though i i do have a project there that it needs to be because of course graduation our graduation films were most of them just cut because the studio shut due the um, uh, situation with the virus yeah. so when there's going to be funds and everything and, and time uh yes there's a film there in the background that needs to be done so well that's brilliant and that's super to hear that um you have that ahead of you and more work will be coming from you and, and the team um and also then it's so important as well i suppose just going forward that you know that you can re rely on each other and you know maybe what each other's strengths are and what skills you have and as you said as well, Sophia, there are so many issues that need a voice and a strong, loud voice and film is a brilliant platform for that in terms of getting messages across. Um, so I'm really excited for you for that and I look forward to seeing what else you and, and everyone you know has in front of them in terms of ideas being developed and, and things being produced. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.